Welcome back, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techy. In this week's video, we're taking a look at Valve's newly announced handheld, the Steam Deck. We're gonna break down its specs, features, and value and decide whether or not it's worth your money. Barring the scalpers don't get them all, of course. Before we dive into this week's video, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Looking for Windows 10 Pro? Visit vip-scdkey.com and search Windows 10. Choose Windows 10 Pro and click Buy Now. Make sure not to skip the part where you get 20% off by using code TECHY at checkout. That's T-E-C-H-Y. Check My Purchased Orders in the User Center to retrieve your key. Yep, I've personally been using SCD Key since way before they became a channel sponsor. You could say we go way back. VIP SCD Key has a full suite of Microsoft Windows and Office keys, as well as game keys from Steam, Origin, Uplay, even PlayStation Store cards, as well as Steam, iTunes, and Nintendo Store cards. I see you eyeing my Windows Insider build of Windows 11. You know what you need to get the free Windows 11 upgrade this winter? An activated copy of Windows 10. Pick up your Windows key today for a free upgrade to Windows 11 this fall at vip-scdkey.com using promo code TECHIE for 20% off. Well, since Nintendo decided to not bother making a Switch Pro, I'm glad someone else has stepped up to the plate. This week, Valve announced their new handheld gaming system, the Steam Deck. Now, before you start having flashbacks of Valve's failed Steam machines, I think this one probably has a much better chance of actually surviving. While Steam machines were a hodgepodge of multiple systems from multiple vendors, and also something no one was asking for at the time, the Steam Deck, on the other hand, is laser-focused, and we've already seen there's a market for handhelds thanks to the Aya Neo and GPD Win 3. Where the Neo and Win 3 fall flat is integration and execution. They aren't bad systems by any means, but you can tell they didn't come from a company like Valve. Arguably, the part I dislike the most about the Steam Deck is the exact attribute that I feel is what's causing the Neo and the Win 3 to suffer, the operating system. I can't tell you the number of times I've sat and watched my son play his Switch and thought, I really wish there was a handheld that ran Windows. In comes the Neo and the Win 3, and to my horror, I realized I absolutely didn't want a handheld that ran Windows 10. There are scaling issues, quirky on-screen keyboards, the list goes on. This week, Gabe over at Valve said, hold my beer and sky dove in riding Thor's hammer, Steam Deck in hand. Was it running Windows? Nope. Steam OS 3.0, which is an offshoot of an Arch Linux distro using KDE Plasma as the desktop interface. Yep, it has a desktop. All of the things the Switch is lacking, the Steam Deck provides in spades. Let's take a closer look at what's on offer spec-wise with this new handheld. The Steam Deck offers a brand new piece of custom silicon from AMD. The chip makes use of four Zen 2 cores from 2019 with SMT enabled to give you a total of eight threads running between 2.4 and 3.5 gigahertz. But wait, why didn't they use the newest Zen 3 architecture? Or what about that sweet stacked vCache coming in Zen 3 Plus? Well, it turns out it's honestly just not necessary thanks to what AMD gave them in the graphics department. The Steam Deck's graphical horsepower comes from eight RDNA 2 compute units. This is pretty sweet considering even the newest desktop APUs from AMD, which are set to launch next month for the DIY market, are still making use of the two generations old Vega graphics architecture. This means the Steam Deck has something no one else has. Except someone else does have it. Microsoft and Sony. This integrated RDNA 2 graphics happens to be the same IP that powers both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Granted, the Steam Deck had to tone it down a bit if you wanted any battery life at all, but RDNA 2 is still present in all its glory running anywhere from 1000 MHz to 1600 MHz, depending on power and thermal constraints. Speaking of battery life, the deck comes equipped with a 40 watt hour battery which Valve claims can net you anywhere from 2 to 8 hours of gaming on a single charge. Additionally, they gave the specific example of you getting 5 hours of playtime in Portal 2 with it locked to 30 FPS. I know two to eight hours sounds like a wild estimate, but you have to remember this isn't running a bunch of first party Nintendo titles that have models looking like they were created in 1998. This is a powerful little handheld which will play AAA titles. More on that in a minute. Let's finish rounding out the specs first. 
also packed into the deck is 16 gigabytes of ultra fast and as the name implies ultra efficient low power DDR5 running at 5500 mega transfers per second. Storage is where the road forks for the different SKUs available. In the base $399 model you get a measly 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Think SD card but soldered to the logic board. The mid-range $529 model packs a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD and the high-end $649 model packs an even faster 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. To round out the specs, we have a 400 nit 7 inch 1280 by 800 LCD screen with anti-glare etching if you spring for the highest SKU, a UHS-1 micro SD card slot for expandable storage, dual speakers, dual mics, headphone jack, USB Type-C port, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a pro-style controller layout with capacitive thumbsticks and dual touchpads. Yep, think of them like two tiny laptop trackpads but for your thumb. Oh, and I almost forgot, the reason I called it a pro-style layout is because it also has four assignable grip buttons on the back of the device, similar to the paddles on an Xbox Elite or Scuf branded controller. Now let's dive into exactly what this little handheld is capable of, starting with the games. This isn't your lockdown switch, my friends. It's capable of playing every game that you could fire up on your desktop or laptop computer, except for maybe Flight Sim 2020. That game would probably cause it to catch fire. The viewers in the audience who remember that at the beginning of this video I rambled on about how I was glad it wasn't running Windows will surely now be blasting off in the comments that Modern Warfare and whatever their favorite game is at the moment isn't only not available on Steam but not even Linux compatible. So what gives? How can it play those games? There's two ways it can go about it. The first way, and man do I have fingers crossed for this one, is Proton. I'm not going to bore you with the details of Proton, mainly because I don't know enough about it to speak intelligently on it, but think of it like a translation layer that allows you to play Windows games and use Windows applications on Linux. If any of you out there have a new M1 MacBook, think Rosetta 2. The reason I say I have my fingers crossed for this is because historically using a wrapper or translation layer to play Windows games on Linux has been a bit of a mixed bag with quite a bit of tinkering involved in some cases to get it running correctly and playing at a good frame rate. If Valve pulls this off and gives us a smooth experience using Proton, not only is this good news for the Steam Deck, but it's good news for anyone who has a love affair with Linux but stuck running Windows on their desktop because they like to play games. Additionally, if the Steam Deck does well, we could potentially even see some game studios finally feel as though it's worth their time to develop games to natively run on Linux. Okay, that's probably a stretch, but I can dream, can I? The second way the Deck is compatible with all Windows games is via Windows itself. Valve has taken the very respectable stance of telling the media and potential buyers up front that they're welcome to take it out of the package as soon as they receive it, wipe the hard drive, and install good old Windows 10. Circling back to what I mentioned earlier, I think this handheld running SteamOS is an attractive attribute. But if you want to, you're welcome to install Windows 10 on it along with all the weird behavior that comes with running Windows on a handheld device like this. This is why I'm hoping Proton pans out. But if all else fails, we can nuke SteamOS right off the device and give Bill Gates a high five while playing Gears of War poolside at his mansion. Okay, so the last elephant in the room regarding playing games has to be addressed. And it's solely because I said this could play just about any game you want, save Flight Sim 2020. Most of you are probably skeptical of this claim, and I don't blame you. We've seen the gallant fight other handhelds have put up while choking down 45 plus watts of power and struggling to not fall on their face. Why is this handheld with a TDP of between 4 and 15 watts all of a sudden capable of playing any game? In my opinion, it's thanks to two factors, screen resolution and fidelity effect super resolution or FSR. If you don't know what FSR is, check out my previous video on the technology. But in short, it's somewhat of a competitor to Nvidia's DLSS but goes about it in a different manner. FSR allows you to run games at a lower resolution and then upscale them to a higher resolution. This means we could run games at a resolution of 1024 by 640 and then have them upscaled to 1280 by 800 to match the deck's native resolution. On a 7 inch screen held at a reasonable distance from your face, I don't think you'll miss running at the actual native resolution. And I can guarantee you that even if you can notice a difference, it'll still look far better than Super Mario Odyssey on the Nintendo Switch. I apologize to my son and all of the Mario lovers out there for that comment. Since I've already slandered the switch up one side and down the other, let's keep that theme going and talk about what the deck is capable of beyond gaming. Well, it's pretty simple. Since it's capable of running Windows, it can do any of the normal non-professional tasks a Windows computer can do. 
But what if you don't want to install Windows on it? Well then it can still do just about anything a laptop or desktop can do because as I mentioned before, it's running a custom distro of Arch Linux. Valve chose KDE Plasma for the desktop interface, so anyone who's familiar with Linux will feel right at home. You can browse the internet, send and receive email, watch movies and videos, and thanks to the USB Type-C port they included, you can do all of that connected to an external monitor or TV. In my opinion, all of these benefits are why this console blows the Switch out of the water, especially the $399 version since Nintendo decided to spend $10 upgrading the Switch and is now charging you an extra $50 for that privilege, bringing its new MSRP to $349. Alright, let's bring this video home and shatter your hopes and dreams. I attempted to reserve myself the mid-range Steam Deck and was met with a whole host of errors on Steam's website. I'm not sure why I expected this to be any different than how things have been for the last year with gaming consoles and GPUs, but I did, and of course I was let down. After 42 minutes of struggling to give Steam $5, I decided to hop on eBay to see if anyone at all had managed to snag a reservation, and this is what I was greeted with. Yeah, if you were hoping to get yourself or a loved one this nice shiny handheld for Christmas, you're out of luck. Two and a half hours later, I was finally able to pre-order one, but unfortunately that means my copy won't be shipping until sometime in Q1 of 2022, according to their website. Please, for the love of all that's holy, do not buy a reservation or a scalped example of this on eBay. For starters, it's just reinforcing bad behavior, and scalpers will continue doing this if we reward them with profits. Second, while this handheld is great value in my opinion, it becomes horrible value as soon as you pay anything above MSRP for it. If you're going to spend a grand or more on one of these, you may as well just get yourself a gaming laptop and enjoy the larger screen and better frame rates. Additionally, it may be a blessing in disguise if you weren't able to snag one, as it could pay off in the long run to sit back and see how all of this unfolds. There's still a lot of unknowns, like whether or not Proton can translate Windows games in a seamless fashion, and heck, who knows, maybe I'm wrong and these things will be dead on arrival just like their long-lost ancestor, the Steam Machine. Let us know down in the comments if you were able to reserve one for delivery at the end of this year. Also, we want to hear from you on what you think about the Steam Deck. Will it flop? Will it do better than its competitors? Is it something you're even interested in buying if you can get one for MSRP? Sound off below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button as it greatly helps the channel. If you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing to help grow our little tech community into something great. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're notified when our next video goes live. We appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.